Tonight on The Readout. Now, justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. This bill makes it clear the world's leading innovation will happen in America. Today, we received another outstanding jobs report. We're on the cusp of passing the most important step we can pass to help us lower inflation. What a week of contrast. As President Biden was racking up win after win, Republicans were pushing abortion bans, social security cuts, election denial, and watching their midterm prospects begin to fade. And a Texas jury just delivered a massive blow to Alex Jones, ordering the conspiracy theorist to pay more than $45 million in punitive damages to the parents of a first grader killed at Sandy Hook. Also tonight, I'll be joined by Andrew Warren, the democratically elected Florida state attorney who is the victim of a blatant abuse of power by Ron DeSantis, who's trying to suspend him. We begin tonight, however, with a great week for President Biden and Democrats in Congress and, frankly, for America. One that will be poised to get even better, perhaps. First up, the economy. After months of criticism of President Biden for everything from gas prices to inflation to you name it, today we got proof that his economic policies are working with the latest blockbuster jobs report. In July, job growth soared. U.S. employers added 528,000 employees, smashing expectations. And the unemployment rate is now down to 3.5 percent, a 50-year low. The job market has now recovered all of its pandemic losses across every sector, from manufacturing to retail. And the president touted the stellar report at the White House in full Biden mode with his signature aviator sunglasses. Today, there are more people working in America than before the pandemic began. In fact, there are more people working in America than any point in American history. And today's report proves make it in America isn't just a slogan, it's my administration. It's a reality. Always does the Biden point. Biden victories, B Biden's victory lap is well-deserved, since it's not just the jobs report. Gas prices have dropped every single day for seven straight weeks, down from a high of more than $5 in June, which Republicans swore was Biden's fault. Meanwhile, Senate Democrats have sent two major bills for the president's signature, the CHIPS Act, to boost American competitiveness in the microchip space, and the PACT Act, expanding health care benefits for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits, overcoming completely unnecessary Republican obstruction and gross high-fiving. Senate Democrats are poised to give the president and the party another big win, preparing to work through the weekend to pass their Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, with historic investment to fight climate change and to extend access to Obamacare and to affordable prescription drugs by finally letting Medicare negotiate with drug companies. After clearing a major hurdle, getting Arizona conservative Senator Kirsten Sinema on board, who demanded the preservation of a major tax loophole for extremely rich hedge funders. Assuming it survives the weekend voterama that Republican Lindsey Graham promised to make hell for Democrats, stay mad, Lindsey, a final vote could come as soon as next week. The very good week began with the announcement of a CIA drone strike that killed al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in Afghanistan. On Tuesday, Kansas voters handed women and girls a major victory, rejecting a ballot measure that would have allowed lawmakers to ban abortion in the state by stripping women's freedom from the state constitution. That vote sent shockwaves through the Republican Party and has them scrambling to try to backpedal on their extreme agenda. So what else have they been up to this week? After that high-fiving and fist-bumping over temporarily holding up military aid for veterans last week, this week, 11 Republicans still voted against it including Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who felt the need to also be a jerk about it. The legislation also creates a presumption of service connection for global war on terror veterans for asthma. The CDC estimates that one in 12 people have asthma, which is approximately 25 million Americans. And then there's the right-wing love fest CPAC in its second day today. They got a lecture on how to win yesterday from Hungarian autocrat Viktor Orban, an appeal that basically consisted of just be more fascist. Since then, well, it's been about what you'd expect. Over 54 countries have now been taken by the machines or are getting taken by the machines. And you never get to go back. It's like Lincoln said. We're not going to be destroyed from foreign forces coming on in. The militant left in America are the modern-day version of book burners. 
When I said that I'm a Christian nationalist, I have nothing to be ashamed of. And that will make America great again when we lean into biblical principles. It occurs to me that the Biden FBI believes this is a room of dangerous radicals. And you know what? They're right. Was that a tan suit on Ted Cruz? Joining me now is Maria Teresa Kumar, president and CEO of Bolta Latino, and Tim Miller, writer at large for The Bulwark and author of Why We Did It, a travelogue from the Republican road to hell. Uh, Tim, I have to start with you because it, it feels like sort of the perfect, uh, you know, chef's kiss ending to Republicans' <laughs> uh, very, very bad week is Alex Jones. Uh, Alex Jones uh, now been hit with a 45.2 million penalty, and that's just the, um, the, the the penalty today. He also had been hit uh, with nine million dollars, so it's over 50 million that he's going to have to fork over to just one of the Sandy Hook families. And I just I have to play you what Marjorie Taylor Greene said, defending defending Alex Jones before that verdict came in. Take a look. Somebody like Alex Jones, who who did say some things. <laughs> But yet he is being politically persecuted right now and being forced to pay out millions and millions of dollars. And, and no, one, no one agrees with what he said, but what we're tired of is the political persecution. Oh, it's the persecution, Tim, of those, those, those persecuting families who just got mad because he said their kids didn't exist and didn't die in a massacre. Your thoughts? Man, CPAC always finds new ways to decide that they are the persecuted ones. They are the ones who, you know, society has thrust their, our ills upon. Uh, look, Joy, I've got some good news here. Uh, you start with good news about Biden, but the Alex Jones thing, bad things are maybe happening to bad people this week. Uh, this has been nice. You know, we haven't had a lot of that the last seven years, but uh, uh, a terrorist, you know, got to meet his maker. Alex Jones has to pay 45, 49, whatever it ends up being, million uh, to the victims. Hopefully that's not the last uh, one of those. Uh, you know, the, the grand jury seems to be doing more work looking into Trump and his associates. Uh, I think that in addition to the very tangible good news, I think that that we can all take a little bit of joy out of people getting their comeuppance after a, a long time of them of them unfortunately avoiding it. No, absolutely. And MTK, I have to say, listen, we, there was an oath, uh, a three percenter who got seven years. I thought it was probably too long. He didn't get the terrorism enhancement. Prosecutors had asked for 15. But we are starting to see the law of consequences kick in. And I, I think that is nowhere more true than in Kansas, where, you know, the arrogance of Alito going out to Rome to applaud himself. I mean, he's like this close to doing rallies like Trump to sort of get himself to be more lauded and famous. After that, Kansas literally slapped down this attempt to strip abortion rights in that state. So it does feel like, Tim is right, that there's a momentum now toward the arc of the moral universe actually starting to bend toward justice. So before I get into that, you should when you pan to both our faces after we saw the CPAC, we could, it was both we couldn't believe it. Like, is this real or SNL, Joy? I mean, I have to acknowledge <laughs> that both our faces were like, oh my god. So the, your producers are doing an excellent job cutting those clips because that was amazing. Uh, that could have been the mic drop, Joy, for the evening, quite frankly. Yeah, indeed. but no. But I think what we're seeing is that when you look at the what happened in Kansas, it wasn't just that Democrats came out. Independents who were not registered in either party came out specifically just to vote on that issue. Yeah. And then you saw a ton of Republicans that voted for the Republican Party for their candidates and still voted against the measure. So this is what the Republicans don't want. They don't want a reason to rile up the American people and recognize for them to recognize that freedom is on the ballot in November. And one of the states that I'm looking at very closely right now as a result of what happened in Kansas is Texas. Mm. Trump won Kansas by 14 points. He won Texas by four points. Mm. And you have Greg Abbott, who is on the ballot, who has personally banned abortions in Texas and has personally tried to obscure the access to the voting booth, and who has tried to do exactly what the Democrats are winning on right now. He tries to say that climate change isn't real. He tries to make sure that everybody has access to their guns without any penalty. And they are going to have a moment of reckoning. I think it's almost fitting that CPAC is, being is taking place in Texas because the, the roosters are coming home. And I think they're going to have a really hard time maintaining that. I think Texas is going to be a lot closer than the Republicans ever wanted it to be.